So it will mean acroglycerate will be the T three molecules of this fatty acid fatty acids of long carbon chains plus one molecule of the glycerol. Glyceride will give us a triglyceride. How will that triglyceride look like? So it would be that if I expand this, that I have C, 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 the three carbon atoms. In our glycerol molecule, I put this uh, distributed like that, then OH like this. OH like that. Then this way, we have our fatty acids. All of them now, this time, are going to be the same. So it means we have the fatty acid C. The bond O O H C H two fourteen C H three. Then another one here C H. This is it O H C H two fourteen C H three. Then another one here. CH2 14 CH3. So the progressive that we're going to form, we said earlier, that T3 
three water molecules are going to be eliminated. Uh, how shall we eliminate the three water molecules? So we said this is going to cut out one hydrogen molecule from this to form water. This breaks off with this to form water and also that is breaking off with this. So our triglyceride that you are going to come out with will be will be C C C what represent the ester bond is this that is the ester bond represent it like that. Then the carbon has its oxygen called VCH2 brackets 14 then CH3. Also this C double bond CH2 brackets 14 CH3. Also C double bond that 14 CH3. So we shall have formed our triglyceride with of course the hydrogen ions there. Of course the hydrogen ions there. So how shall we name the triglyceride? It will depend on the name of of the fatty acid. And we have several fatty acids. So that's how lipids are formed. So this region, we are calling it the ester bond. The ester bond. So this is an ester bond, an ester bond, an ester bond. Linking it with alcohol, our glycerol to fatty acids. They are chemicals of life. Lipids are chemicals of life. Let's first study the nature of the fatty acids. We focus on fatty acids now. How do they look like? Fatty acids as components of lipids, fatty acids. So, the classes, you can say types of fatty acids, types of fatty acids. There are various types of fatty acids there are various types of fatty acids. These include, these include, we have major two saturated fatty acids, saturated fatty acids, and two unsaturated. Unsaturated fatty acids. What will be the saturated fatty acids? If you take a case of the saturated fatty acids, this will be this. Are these are fatty acids? These are fatty acids. 
that love that love multiple bonds they will lack multiple bonds in the carbon skeleton in the carbon skeleton what we call the alkyl group we shall call it the alkyl group so the saturated fat the alkyl groups we are talking about are uh, this so it, let's say if we take the example of the saturated fatty acid let's say there are very many let's say stearic acid stearic acid so the stearic acid will appear like ch3 ch2 ch3 ch2 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 just very many of them so you can condense and say this ch2 is becoming very repetitive let's say this is one two three four five six that would be seven i say here yeah. eight then c o o h I put it like that. So this would be a saturated fat acid. In the carbon atom skeleton, the carbon there is fully saturated. It has maximum bonds. It has a carbon to carbon single bond in it and no multiple bonds. Multiple bonds will remain a double bond between carbon atoms or a triple bond between carbon atoms. So how the other one I want to leave that there. The other one will be the unsaturated fatty acid. The unsaturated fatty acid. For the unsaturated fatty acid there is one or more or more multiple bodies multiple bodies in the alkyl group in the alkyl group what we mean we can take an example of oleic acid, let's say. Oleic acid. These specifics we can pick them. So oleic acids will be like this CH3, CH2, let's say seven of them seven of them then c h double bond c h then c h two let's say five of them then c o o h our main interest is in this region here this region here this one is an alkene functional group. So presence of a double bond between carbon atoms in a fatty acid makes it an unsaturated fatty acid. So meaning that if a triglyceride, that means the lipid, is made up of a saturated fatty acid, and the other one is made up of an unsaturated fatty acid. 
Do they have different properties? Yes, they might have different properties all together. They have different properties. So some, some unsaturated, some unsaturated D, fatty acids are mono unsaturated. Fatty acids. They are mono unsaturated fatty acids, which we are going to abbreviate and say MUFA. Meaning that they contain, they contain only one multiple bond. They contain only one multiple bond in their carbon secretion. So they will be like this with only one multiple bond within the carbon atom secretion. So it would mean others are poly unsaturated fatty acids poly unsaturated fatty acids which you are going to abbreviate and say they are PUFA a poly unsaturated fatty acid would look like this it would contain more multiple bonds that's hydrogen that's hydrogen hydrogen just to illustrate this fcch2 three of them then c double bond c like that then let's say cooh with of course this CH3, it's a CH2 this way. So such a unsaturated fat acid that will contain more than one region of unsaturation. We shall call it a poly unsaturated fat acids. So how do the properties made by a mono unsaturated, poly unsaturated, and the saturated fatty acids differ. How do they differ? So we have that one brings us to fats and oils. So we can have now types of lipids. Types of lipids. Types of lipids would have one fats and two oils. What are fats? If we are to compare them with oils, what would they be? A comparison between these two, what would it give us? A comparison between fat C and the oils. All our lipids, meaning they take up the triglyceride structure. So what are the properties of this? 
One property we shall take is that the facts are, li are solids. Ati room temperature. At this temperature of ours, whichever it is, you are going to find it as a solid. We are free to call it a fat. Then oils are liquids at room temperature. So meaning our cooking oil we use always the, the name goes in it that cooking oil we use to fry our sauce our foods it means it is here then it means fats contain Fats contain majorly, majorly saturated fatty acids, saturated fatty acids. Then this contain mainly any saturated fatty acids it would mean therefore being that these ones contain unsaturated fatty acids fats Ala less reactive. This are more reactive. Because the double bond region, the double bond region in the unsaturated fatty acids is a reactive region which will cause the oils to react. So sometimes you can store an oil and you find when it has changed the appearance because it has reacted. So how does it react? That oils can be converted into fats for storage. Yes, for storage, what will you do? We take a, a scenario in the manufacturing of margarine. What we spread on our bread. How is margarine created? It is a fat also that we apply. We take a scenario of hardening. of margarine. Hardening of margarine. In hardening of margarine, it is done by hydrogenation in presence of a catalyst. In most cases, it is nickel. So this unsaturated fatty acid, CH2, CH double bond CH, let's say OOH, when you add on hydrogen to it, 
in the presence of nickel as a catalyst, you're going to create CH3, CH2, CH2, then CH2, COOH. To make one less it and bring it back here, that it can appear well. So you're going to form CH3, CH2. CH2, single bond CH2, COOH. Meaning, the double bond region here will have been converted to a single bond region. When this is done, oils are turned into solids now at room temperature. And so we create a fat. So an oil can be converted to a fat. And that's what our body does in most cases. Oils are converted into fats for storage. For storage, we're going to see the various uses of lipids and chemicals of life. The various uses of So, majorly that means it's created from oils, or you can harden it further by pumping it, hydrogen into it. We can now talk about importances of lipids to organisms. Lipids to organisms. So they don't have a primary role in our bodies and in bodies of other things, but the major role for them is to they are energy reserves. They are energy reserves. Meaning that in the times of stress, when the body requires a lot of energy and the carbohydrates are not there, it is lipids that are broken down to provide the energy. So that's where the advice comes from. You want to cut weight, body size, do an exercise. How will the exercise help you? The exercise helps you in this instance that as you are carrying out the exercise, the body shall require a lot of energy. That energy cannot be supplied by the carbohydrates, the glucose, the glycogen, which we saw that is in our body. That energy can be now, be, will be derived from fats. So by doing the excess, you are burning down the excess fats you are put in your body as energy reserves and carbon dioxide the water and you get the energy. So that's the essence of the exercise to cut weight, to avoid overweight. So their energy reserves. That means they provide energy to what? To organisms. Two, they do protective functions, protection of delicate internal organs against mechanical shock against mechanical shock so around our lipids are deposited around the the kidney even around the heart sometimes around intestines for protection so that if you fell down and you, your body is fatty the forces do not spread into your organs 
So they are there for that protection. Once you slaughter a, a, a goat, some fatty goats, you may not even be able to see the kidney because the kidney is protected. Then, three, insulation against heat loss. Therefore, insulation against heat loss. So, organisms that live in very cold environments would we'll take an example of, let's say, a whale. A whale is a mammal, a whale in water. The biggest part of the whale is fat. So they have, oh, just below their skin, they have fat which we call a blubber stored under their skin. It insulates them against what it loss because once inside the water body, it would mean they are the ones that would continuously be losing heat, being endotherms, continuously be losing heat to the water surrounding them. So to avoid that one, a layer of fat is between the blood vessels and the water, and so they do not lose the water heat to that extent. Even polar bears, polar bears, if we compare animals that stay in the desert vis-a-vis -vis animals that stay in the temperate regions, you, you see very big differences. Animals that stay within those regions that receive winter seasons, very cold environments, have a lot of fat in them. They even take up big sizes so that the fat can insulate them. So polar bears in temperate regions. In temperate regions. Those regions that receive a lot of cold environments, at least once in a year. Those organisms are adapted to this level. They put on structures that insulate them, and one of them is in alafats. Also, also, fats, number four, fats are the precursors. Are the precursors for formation of hormones. Like a uh, estrogen, which is a very good sexual hormone. A precursor is something that is used to make another thing that is already there in the body that can be used to form another chemical of life. You can talk about hormones and uh, proteins as chemicals of life. What do they do to us? Shall we meet it in the protein section? So I want to come back and now compare these fats. If fats are compared to if fats are compared to carbohydrates, fats are energy reserves. Eh? Well, that's what we say. Our energy reserves. If fats are energy reserves, lipids are energy reserves. What makes them so fats are better? Fats are better energy reserves fats are a better energy reserve compared to carbohydrates 
compared to carbohydrates or starch, let's compare it to starch and glycogen. Why? We ask ourselves, why are they better energy reserves? What do they beat carbohydrates with in being better energy reserves? One, fats are totally insoluble in water. They are purely organic substances that are not even soluble in what? In water. So fats are insoluble in water. So they do not interfere with the, the osmosis, the osmolarity of cells storing them. So our bodies, when you eat carbohydrates, let's say you eat excess glucose, the insulin hormone within us protects us by converting that excess glucose to lipids, then we store lipids. Instead of much converting it to glycogen, because the lipids, on addition of being totally insoluble, they have other functions within us. We have just seen that they can help us against deep loss, they can help us protect delicate internal body organs that gives them even a more upper hand. Two. Two. Fats are more inert. Are more inert than carbohydrates. Than carbohydrates. What does this mean? Fats can be stored for a longer time. Can be stored for a longer time. If you have the maize flour, cassava flour, and you store it somewhere, compared to lipids, after a year, the starch storage will have turned even properties. The portion will have become sour from the maize flour. Why? They will have reacted and formed other substances. The other. So we cannot store. Our bodies do not store the glycogen. Neither do they store the fats. They totally store other substances. Majorly fats. Three. Fats are light. So contribute less. to the body weight compared to lipid to carbohydrates. When you compare carbohydrates to lipids, carbohydrates are far too heavy. Why are fats lighter? Why are fats lighter than lipids? We're going to take a scenario. We're going to take a scenario of glucose, just glucose, with a fat acid of equal carbon atoms. So glucose, we say is C6H12O, 
or 6. This molecular weight would be 12 times 6 plus 12 times 1 plus 6 times 16. This would be 72 plus 12. This would be plus 96. Plus 96. This would take us to 84, 180. Glucose weighs 180 grams. One molecule of glucose like this. If we took a fatty acid, if we took a fatty acid of six carbon atoms, that means CH3, CH2, 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 those are uh, one, two, three, four, five, then six. The molecular weight would be the molecular weight would be six carbon atoms. It means it would be twelve times six. That plus plus hydrogen is one times three. Five, seven, nine, eleven, twelve. I counted well. Five, nine, eleven, twelve. Plus oxygen is sixteen, and they are twelve. Them. This molecular weight now would become. 72 plus 12 plus 32. This will give us 84, 116 grams. Meaning, given a fat, a fat acid of the same size, fats are lighter than lipids because of this. Okay. So what contributes to the carbohydrates being heavier is the content of oxygen. Carbohydrates contain a lot of oxygen and oxygen is a heavy atom. Here, the fat acids contain less oxygen. That means the lipid is containing Let's see oxygen. So if you have calculated the ratio, if you have calculated the ratio of ratio of hydrogen to oxygen in my number one in carbohydrates. What would that ratio be? It would mean we have 12 hydrogens to 60 oxygens. That means our ratio would be 2 to what? 2 to 1. Oxygen. What about for lipids? In lipids, the ratio is going to become we have 12 of them, 12 hydrogens, 12 many, to 2 oxygens, meaning the ratio is going to become 6 to 1. Oxygen. So how is this of importance? One, 
it makes the lipids lighter. And once something is lighter, it means it is contributing less to the body weight of an organism storing it. If it is contributing less, to organisms that store the lipids will easily escape, manage their weight, escape danger in terms of... So, lipids are better energy stores. That was point number four because of this. Because lipids also are more compact. So you can say the lipids are more compact than carbohydrates. That's number five. Lipids are more compact than carbohydrates. How is this of importance to the organism? If something is more compact, it would mean a lot can be stored in, small, in a small space. A lot can be stored in a small space. So it means instead of storing glycogen that is bulky, we store lipids. Imagine if lipids are making us appear we, like we do. If we are storing glycogen only that is even more away, is, is bulky, it would mean it is in six. Lipids have a higher calorific value. A higher calorific value. Meaning, provide a lot of energy when oxidizing. When you break down lipids, a lot of energy comes from them. A lot of energy comes. And that energy can run a lot of processes. Why do they have more calorific value? Why do they have more calorific value? Because, because they the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is high. The one we already saw, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is high. And you know that when we oxidize the foods, we are targeting hydrogen. Oxidation is removal of what? Hydrogen. So we remove hydrogen from the... So, let's say, when glucose is oxidizing, when glucose is oxidizing in the presence of oxygen, we create carbon dioxide plus water and energy. Okay? This hydrogen got from the glucose, that oxygen, that, that hydrogen, is what gives us energy in chemiosmosis in the mitochondria, that gives us energy as we are making ATP. That hydrogen is even the one we have used to make what? Water. So meaning the more the hydrogen inside the lipid, inside the food substance, the more energy that comes from that food substance. So carbohydrates give us a lot of, yes, give us energy, but because they contain less hydrogen, the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen is low. 
carbohydrates give us more energy compared to them. Then seven. Seven. That is lipids. Provide a lot of metabolic water. When oxidized, metabolic water is this water here that has been produced along the side. When you oxidize glucose, yes, you provide metabolic water. But because high carbohydrate lipids contain a lot of hydrogen, a lot of water will come from them. So there are some organisms that store this intentionally. Organisms that live in the desert where water access is low, external water access is low. A camel has this hub here. On top of it, on its back, that hump is not a decoration. It is of purpose. It is storing lipids. A camel can even stay for a month minus taking water and even minus taking food. Because of this, the lipids will double up, give you a lot of energy to run the body processes, but also continue. To give you to, to give the animal metabolic what water so camels store their food reserve in the hump then that food reserve serves two purposes provision of energy because in the desert food is scarce and the herbivores water is scarce so they get a double benefit from storing in lipids. So in addition to this, lipids are better energy stores because they even serve other purposes other than storing energy. They give you metabolic water. They contribute less to the weight. They are not they can store the energy for a longer period of time. But in addition, they can even continue and serve other processes of protection. They protect you against heat loss. They protect you against mechanical damage around delicate organs. So those are lipids. Those will be lipids. We have now one question to answer. That question is going to be if lipids are energy, are energy are better energy stores than the carbohydrates, why are anti lipids the primary source of energy? Why are lipids the primary sources of energy? They are good energy stores, yes. But why are they today the first ones we use to get energy? And we use other substances, in fact, to say carbohydrates. I will not even take you far. Glucose is the primary source of energy. In our bodies, it is not a good storage molecule, but it is the primary source of energy compared to lipids. One thing that disqualifies lipids from being our primary sources of energy. One, just like that. Lipids are very inert. 
lipids are very very inert so they require they require a lot of activation energy to react to give you energy that means producing energy from lipids is costly it is very very costly you have to first supply some energy you need it is like mining oil crude petroleum here that petroleum products are very expensive yes but to extract petroleum products from the crude oil is very very expensive some extent that some countries that have good petroleum say it has good petroleum and they buy the final day results. That's the same thing here. That lipids yes give us a lot of energy, they are good energy reserves, but one thing they are AC reactive. When we need energy from them, we need to supply fast energy to them for them to give us energy. So they are not the primary sources of energy. That means for lipids to give us energy, it occurs in terms of starvation. Their energy reserves. Once you are starving, the body will go back. And the oxidized lipids as an option to give you energy. But they are not the primary sources of energy because of this. Let's look at their neighbors. Derivatives from lipids. Discuss one or two derivatives from lipids. Derivatives from lipids. Lipid derivatives. What, which chemicals of life are derived from lipids? One, we have what we shall call a phospholipid. A phospholipid. In a phospholipid, they are the two what acids because a glycero and an inorganic phosphate an inorganic phosphate which are going to abbreviate as P I meaning the phospholipid does not make up the level of the glycero it makes it up the level of it does not make it because the one fatty acid in the triglyceride secretion is lost so how do they look like how do lipids look like the lipids are the phospholipids it means we still have our Glycero of three, then this glycero is linked by the ester bond to the two fatty acids. This is carbon, double bond oxygen, HCCR carbon, double bond, oxygen, and another R. Then in this position, 
we have an inorganic phosphate pi linked here by the phosphor bond steel so this bond here will be called a phosphor bond a phosphor to will even be by a phosphor bond that is linking up the inorganic phosphate. So in this way, a phospholipid will look like that. So meaning that a phospholipid is going to get other properties from triglycerides. We already said that lipids are insoluble in what? In water. So if they are insoluble in water, the, the phospholipid gets another property. So we shall represent the phospholipid like that. Like this. Represented as this. This one is a tail. That one is the head. Which is the head and which is the tail on the phospholipid? This is it here. This part here is the tail. I would call this part here the neck and this phosphor end is the head. Is the head. So it means the tail is hydrophobic. Hydro is water, phobic is head. So hydrophobic. In other words, insoluble in water. In water, something that is soluble in water is water repairing. The tail is water repairing. Then the head is hydrophilic water loving. Water loving. That means it associates with what? With water. That means the tail, the head is polar, the tail is nani polar. So such a molecule is a wonderful molecule. It means it has two properties on behaving with water. The tail being nonipolar, it does not go into solution. The head being polar, it goes into solution. So such a chemical, we shall describe it and say phosphor phosphor Lipids are amphiphatic. Phospholipids are amphiphatic. An amphiphatic substance because they have two. Regions. The polar region and the non-polar region. The polar region and the non-polar 
with each other. So we have seen lipids in the cell membrane. That means lipids are used to form other substances like phospholipids, which are crucial components of the cell membrane. And in fact, the arrangement of lipids in the cell membrane are like this. Remember, the cell membrane is a biphospholipid layer like that. The head and the tail, like that. Water can dissolve this part here, but it won't dissolve this. So if you pour oil, cooking oil, if this is water, the cooking oil will orient itself like this. The head is the be there, the tail is there. And now we shall say, oil floats on what? On water. Not because water is very heavy. Yes, water is heavy. We looked at water. It is denser than these oils and even fat supplied. But of course, everything has a price. But if the heads will come into contact with the water and form a bond there, the polar bonds. Then the tail is repelled away. Because the tail on the phospholipid is bigger than the head, in most cases, the phospholipid is, the phospholipid is more non-polar than being what? Polar. So the portion of the phospholipid that goes into solution is very small. So it behaves more of being non-polar and the second attribute of this in the cell membrane would be that presence of phospholipids within our cell membranes makes the cell membrane semi-permeable. What does this mean? This region of the cell membrane is nonipolar. Okay? And it is the biggest region. Meaning when you pour water here, water cannot pass through the cell membrane via the biphospholipid layer. Water does not pass through. So for water to pass through the cell membrane, there are other attributes in the cell membrane, the glycoprotein, the, the globular proteins, which form now special channels, which can help water penetrate the cell membrane by acting so the cell membrane is semi-permeable. A semi-permeable membrane is one that allows some substances to pass through and stops others. Water is stopped from passing by the phospholipid layer because of this. The tails dictate what the phospholipid says, and the tail is non-polar. So how does water cross the biphospholipid layer? There are special globular proteins you see in cell theory. So water will pass via the channel proteins, a special kind of globular protein. So water will pass via here to enter into the cell. Those powers, sometimes we call them aquapolis. Aquapolis within the cell membrane. So the water the cell membrane is there. So lipids help us to make phospholipids, and the phospholipids form a clear component within our cell membrane, which we call the biphospholipid layer, which is the major component in the cell membrane, giving it properties of being semi permeable. That is one derivative from lipids. The second derivative from 
will it be this? Will it be Gilaiko? Will it be this? Gilaiko lipidis? This one will it be a carbohydrate, a carbohydrate plus a lipid. And glycolipids are also present on the cell membrane. We can also have lipoproteins. Lipoproteins. It means we have lipids mixed with the proteins. So we have lipoproteins. On the side of lipoproteins, they have caused a lot of problems also. Everything has its own good way. The lipoproteins are the ones that end up clogging our arteries and veins, blood vessels, narrowing them. Major if they are low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins, they will, sol they will solidify out of blood and clog the arteries, causing what we call now hypertension because the blood vessels will have. Not. So chemicals. It related to lipids. Chemicals related to the lipids. Chemicals related to lipids. We can take the first example of wax. Wax on candles. In honeycombs is not a lipid, although they are almost similar. The major difference of a wax and a lipid is only one. Hmm? Lipid wa waxy contains other alcohols, other alcohols of longer carbon chain, other than. Glycerol. So instead of glycerol, they have other chemicals. They have other chemicals, and majorly they have. They you might find when they are having five carbon atoms or four. So meaning they will contain more fatty acids. You find one wax molecule consisting of seven fatty acids. That's why they are solids. But solids of low melting point. Solids of low melting point. Those are.